Hi, let's talk about fills and paths. If I have a graphic like this, which is fairly uh, complex, and I want to give this a fill, you'll see that there is no fill here now because it's just a uh, it's just the black. Uh, it's not an outline, but the black uh, vector, and so this this. Uh, rectangle is behind it so you can you can see right through it there's no fill but I want to give these wings a color and um, there are several ways I can work with this you might be familiar in Corel draw at least with the smart fill tool interactive fill and um, I, sometimes that will work at, not always and uh, in this instance I'm not going to even work with that I'm going to uh, create my own fill and let me show you how I'm going to do that. As you know, to fill an object, it, it needs to be a closed path, meaning uh, there needs to be a boundary for the fill to fall within. So if I zoom in like this, you can see there are some gaps in here and, and I need to fill these gaps in before I can uh, fill this object with color. So to create a closed path, I need to connect all this stuff here where these gaps are. An easy way to do that is just to capture a node and drag it so that it overlaps the other object. And then you're going to want to select these by holding down Shift. And then I'm going to weld it using my weld tool. Just weld it to itself now you can see that this is one continuous object. Now I can keep doing that here and I can shape this out if I please. Um, you'll find when I zoom out this isn't going to make that much of a difference but depending on what this is for, if this is for a, an advertisement or something you're going to want to do a good job on it. You always want to do a good job but if it's for a web page or something you can probably get away with being a little sloppier than you ordinarily would. So I'm going to do that same thing here. Weld it to itself. And if I want I can clean this up by eliminating nodes. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get this to close up completely. Once again weld to itself. Clean it up as you like. There we go. That works. And then I'm going to keep doing that over here. I'll zoom out for a second so I can show you that we have a unique situation here. You see this is connected to the wrong place. It's going to want to fill all this in here. I really want it to connect to this. So if you've ever tried to disconnect a, a, a vector object, you, you know that that can be a little frustrating. Um, you can see what I'm talking about, this line here, it's not really a line, it's a shape. And it connects to this inside feather here. And I really want it to come over here and connect to this, so, it, so I have a continuous path around the outside. So how do I get it off of there? Alright, I'm going to use the same tool, but instead of weld, I'm going to use trim. I'm just going to make a little square here. And make it a color so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to trim. Select it, and I'm going to trim this black shape here. And I'll get rid of that and now I've opened this path and I can now grab these nodes pull them down here eliminate nodes as necessary if you've watched some of my other videos you know I like to use as few nodes as possible um, too many nodes makes it difficult to shape out and it also gives the graphic more of a, a rough look
So let's see what we're dealing with here. I've got these two nodes crossed. I'm going to move this out. I'll shape that out in a moment. And now I'm going to do the same thing right here. And now I'm going to just wel start welding this stuff together. Weld and weld. Okay, and now this is all one object. And keep eliminating these nodes. You don't want all this stuff in there. All right, now I'm going to zoom out again and see what I'm dealing with. I think I will do this, do that, catch this over here, shape out this line a little, little more pleasingly. There we go and get it to match the rest of the illustration. Okay. Now I'm gonna just sort of look around here. That's where my square was. Don't worry about that. Make sure this is an entirely closed path. I'm seeing no gaps in here. Carefully look. There might be one. It might be very small, but a gap will prevent you from filling this. Okay, I'm liking what I see. And that's because they're identical, so I'm actually just going to marquee select this and delete it. I'm just going to work with this one and then I'm going to mirror it. So now we've got a closed path, I believe. There's no gaps in here. We've got all this stuff in here. So what I'm going to do in this instance, because I want this all to be black on my final drawing, is I'm going to use my combine tool. And now this is one vector object. Now how am I going to fill this? As I said, you might, have, you might be familiar with the Smart Fill tool. And sometimes that will do what you want. Other times it will not. Um, I prefer to do my fills this way for a complex object like this. An easy fill would just be to fill it in and let this black knock out the color. Uh, but if you're doing color separation for uh, offset printing or if you're doing a I don't know, a t-shirt job where this might need an underbase and a trap. You might need your fill to fit perfectly within the boundaries of your vector. And it's particularly important if you're sending this out to someone else to work with. Uh, let's say you create the graphics and someone else has to print it. The simpler you make this for them, the easier it's going to be for them to figure out what you've done. And the less chance there's going to be to make a mistake. You don't want all this kind of stuff separate where they might lose it by accident, you might print without that, or they might not understand how you've uh, worked a trap or whatnot. It's much better to simplify this into one object for the black and one object for the fill. Let's assume that's the case here. I'll just draw a square and I'll make it orange and I'll put it in the back. Now I'm going to um, select my wing. I'm going to go back to my trim tool and I'm going to trim away that orange. Now to see what I'm doing, I'm going to cut the wing part away. Now this is orange is one continuous object so I need to break the curve apart and if I delete that part I've got a fill. Now that fill would work okay like I said for many many projects. Uh, if, if I was creating a JPEG for a website or something that would be fine just the way it is. But let's say this is for a, a printing project offset screen printing, whatever. 
I want my fill to be to include the uh, knockouts for the black. So I'm just going to get rid of that outside part, which was the black line. And now this is my fill. And to bring out all that detail on the inside, I'm going to marquee select this and combine it. Now I have a perfect fill, so I can paste my. Remember, I cut that. I didn't. I didn't delete it. So now my black uh, border and my fill are perfectly matched. So I can do whatever I want in the way of trapping or uh, underbasing or whatever I want to do. And now that I have a fill, I can change it to whatever color I want. And I think I'm going to do it that. And once again, since this is identical to the one I deleted, I'm going to copy the whole thing, paste it. I'll mirror that. And just spread them apart a little bit. And there's my completed graphic with a fill. And I'm uh, free to work with this at this point however I please. So that's the way I do complex fills, and uh, you're going to have to practice a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want. You have to kind of be patient and work with it. But give this a try, and I hope your next project goes well.